What's up, mamas? My name is Maggie Schott. I'm a team member here at BoGen. Welcome to Express Yourself. This is the YouTube channel where we share tips, tricks, and all things helpful on your mommying journey. This video is focused on self-care, but specifically ways to make it sustainable. As moms, we're busy and there's a lot of different demands on our time. So it's hard when we find a new self-care routine or maybe to bring back a self-care routine that we have really benefited from in the past and make it sustainable because we have a lot to do. I'm speaking to you personally in this video. As a former yoga instructor, I've served in a lot of different roles in my life. Uh, my life has been pretty busy, uh, lots of demands, even before I had kids. So self-care has always been something that's extremely important to me. And I've also tried to teach that to other people, both through being a yoga instructor, also being a high school field hockey coach, being a ski instructor, all these different roles. I've always tried to kind of bring this to the table. Life hasn't always been pretty peachy either. Right before I became a yoga instructor, I, I hit a low point. Um, in 2012, I was grasping at straws and trying to find happiness and trying to find things that would pour into me or to refill my cup, as I like to say. So part of that yoga journey was a journey of self-discovery and finding things that were important to me that I benefited from and that really affected both my physical and mental health. And then it came time to try to make those sticks. I mean, it was stick. It wasn't always like this dreamy, oh, I found a self-care routine and this has been great and my life has been changed. So let's dive into the things that I've learned over the years that have worked for me and also have worked for other people in my life. And the first thing we need to do, if we're not quite sure where to start, if we don't have routines that we can lean on that worked out for us in the past, is to kind of lean into ourselves and figure out what works for us. It's hard um, to know what's going to work right off the bat. And listening to other people is great to give you ideas. But just because something works for someone doesn't mean that it's necessarily going to benefit you in the same way. So try lots of different things. Try journaling, maybe sitting uh, in meditation or reading, or maybe movement is something that re is really important to you. So exercise in whatever uh, form it's going to take. For me, being outside and being active has always been a part of my self-care. Um, I love to take hikes. I love to go take the dog for a walk. I love to just go ride my bike. It's always been something that I know is going to have an immediate effect, but it's not always easy to do. So having that go to, okay, I know I need to do this, even though I'm tired or cranky or whatever it might be, can be inspiring or the kind of kick in the pants that I need to go <laughs> and do my self-care routines. Also, if it doesn't work for you, it's not going to be enjoyable. So if you hate sitting there and writing or if you just fidget and you can't sit still, meditation might not work for you. So you really need to find something that not just works, but also brings you a little bit of joy because you're going to be doing this quite often and it's hard to motivate yourself to do something that you just don't really like, even if it's good for you. The second part or second tip I have for you is not to minimize the activity. I yes, like to be active. Yes, I'm into yoga. Yes, I'm into meditation, but I also really enjoy crafting. Knitting has become, even before I found yoga, a really big part of my mental health. And that sounds crazy to a lot of people or silly, you know, how you're just, that's your hobby. How does it affect your mental health? But sitting there, making sure that my hands are busy while I'm being productive and making something also just allows my brain to tackle different things. I can think about things. I can also listen to people. I can, so I can enjoy a conversation while I'm doing it. I can check out and watch TV while I'm doing it, whatever I need to do. It's always just been a part of my self-care routine. And if I listen to other people who don't understand how that it could possibly have an effect on my mental health, I wouldn't do it as much. And so I wouldn't have as much joy in my life or I wouldn't have that catharsis um, from 
that activity. It also boosts my creative energy, which then helps me in my day job. So I write a lot of content and I've got to think and come up with things and, you know, be funny or be entertaining or be interesting. And it takes a lot of creative energy. So it's one of my ways that I kind of refill my cup when I'm feeling low. So don't minimize the activity, whatever it is that works for you, make the time to do it and just let other people know, Hey, this is important for me. And this is what works for me. In the same vein as not minimizing the activity and not letting other people minimize the activity for you, you might need to set some boundaries. So people just think, hey, you're exercising a lot. Like, why are you doing that? You're not, you're, it's taking you away from your kids or you're sticking your husband with your kids. Your, you know, your partner might, you know, think, oh, all you do is work out or, you know, these different thoughts. We need to have conversations around our mental and physical health and, talk to people, tell them, communicate with them. But yeah, it's not just my cardio. It's also my mental health. It's how I go check out and work through and process the thoughts that I have or you know how I deal with the stress that I might be having today. Set those boundaries and people will hopefully respect them. So it makes it easier to implement that self-care as a routine. If you don't communicate the boundaries, You're going to have people distracting you from them or trying to talk you out of it or kind of looking at you, not totally in judgment, but it might feel that way. And it just is a lot easier to make something a habit or make something sustainable if other people around you know why you're doing it. And even if they don't understand, like they still can't, it it doesn't equate for them. You know, they don't get it. At least they know that this is important for you and it works for you. This is kind of something that I've had to do throughout my life. I'm into really obscure sports um, that are kind of on the fringe. So I'm really, you know, we love to go ride our bikes in this family. We're big into cycling. Um, I've also skied since I was three years old. and, And people kind of look at that as like a luxury or different things. But getting out and being in nature throughout the year is a big part of my mental health. I live in Pittsburgh. It gets dreary. It gets gray. People, you know, seasonal affective disorder is a thing here. Skiing is a huge mental health boost for me in the winter. And yeah, it's hard, but we find ways to make it work. While I was pregnant, I knew I needed to keep doing these things. And people would just say, oh my gosh, it's dangerous. You can't do that. We talked with our healthcare professionals. We talked with our family. We talked with each other and we made the decisions that were right for our family. Most people ended up respecting our boundaries. Some didn't, but we could deal with those people. We had the energy to deal with them because most people, for the most part, kind of gave us the space to do what we needed to do as a family. It takes work. There's going to be times when you miss a session or you skip an activity or you skip a day or you have an off week. That's okay. Give yourself grace. Don't beat yourself up. You're trying either new things or you're you're trying to create a new routine by bringing back something that you've loved in the past, it's going to take work. It's going to take effort and you're going to miss it here and there. And that's okay. The key is that you're trying, you recognize that you've missed it. You've got that kind of gut guilt feeling that, oh my gosh, I need to keep doing this. Use that as motivation and just schedule it back in. On the flip side or in tandem, I guess I should say, is to set an attainable frequency. Going and doing something for 30 days every day is not necessarily the right thing for everybody to do. Maybe implementing something in, uh, maybe adding it in once a week, right? Every Monday or Wednesday or whatever it is. Once a week, you're gonna either sit down and do something or you're gonna carve out time to go for a run, whatever it is. Try once a week. Then you can maybe up it to three times a week. And then who knows, eventually you might be doing it every day. But if you set an attainable frequency, there's less chance that you're going to miss that frequency and then get those like guilty feelings where you're beating yourself up. My last tip for you is to set aside time for reflection, both during the activity and then afterwards. This will help you really key into how much of an effect it's having on your mental and physical well-being. So let's say journaling is right for you. It's something that you're going to do, whether it's a bullet journal or whether it's like full-on dear diary, this is what's going on in my life. While you're writing, maybe halfway through a page, a page into it, whatever you're doing, just stop and say like, okay, I can feel the stress mitigating. I can feel the anxiety melting away. 
or maybe, you know, maybe it's in the middle of a run kind of not literally take a pulse check, but like key in and figure out like, okay, this makes me feel good. That basic level, it doesn't have to be anything profound. You know, you're not, you don't have to be a philosopher about it, but just take time during the activity to feel the benefits that it's giving you. If it's not giving you any benefits, if it's not giving you happiness or joy, you know, maybe this isn't right for you. All right. But if it is, that shows you how important and impactful it is. And again, once you're done with that, right, activity or physical activity makes sense because you kind of get that like runner's high afterwards of those endorphins, right? But after the activity, whatever it is, whether it's reading, whether it's taking a bath, whatever that self-care looks like for you, sit with it for a minute. Just kind of figure it out. Look at, you know, go inwards and feel what's going on there. And if it's positive in any way, if it's alleviated stress, if it's just kind of re-energize you, if it's whatever it is, feeling and experiencing that feeling is going to help you keep going. It's going to make you look forward to the next time that you're doing it. So that's going to help make it more of a habit or incorporate it into your daily routine and to make your self-care routines sustainable. Thank you so much for watching this video. Mama, this is Like I said, I'm passionate about this one. It's almost self-care for me to (laughs) talk about it at this point. But I hope this has helped give you a few tips on how to carve out some time and make time for your self-care because it is so important. As moms, we put ourselves last. And if you put yourself last continuously, you're going to end up being that mommy martyr. And that's not what you want. It's not good for your family. Uh, taking it all on yourself, it's going to possibly lead to resentment, exhaustion. You're not going to, even when you're pre- be, when you're present with your family, you can't really be there in the moment and give them your energy because you have none left. So self-care is not selfish. It's important. It's vital. It makes us better parents. So I hope, I really, really hope that this helps you in your journey as a parent, as a mother, share it with a friend. If you think that they need help on this journey or help making self-care a priority and go down in the comment sections below. Tell us, tell me your self-care routines. I want to know what you do. What gives you joy? What refills your cup? It might help another mom try something new and find something that works for them. Please stick around, subscribe, hit that bell so that you get notified for new content like this one and all of our breastfeeding content as well. Thanks so much, mamas. Have a great day.